Welcome back to this year's Chalk Talk Awards. I'm your host, Amelia Dalton. And before we move on to our next category, let's take a moment to remember the technologies that have passed. Knobs. Dials. VHS. Laserdisc. Google Glass. Oh, a little too soon with that one, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Push buttons. Yep, you heard me right. The end of the era for the push button is drawing near. Folks, as I'm sure you have noticed, we're in the middle of a touch technology revolution, and the world of electronic design may never be the same again. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Touch is everywhere these days. And does that also mean your next design? It can. Today, my guest is Clark Jarvis from NXP, and we're going to investigate the trends and solutions in this touch revolution environment and chat all about how you can get started with the NXP touch solution. So let's go. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find more information about the NXP Touch Solution. Hi, Clark. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, thank you very much. It's great to be here. Okay, so we're here to talk about replacing buttons with, well, touch. But why is this an issue, Clark? What's wrong with the current way we've got things set up? Yeah, so you know what? If you look at where we are with push buttons, and especially if you look at our smartphones today, right, it really has changed the way that we expect to interact and engage with a product, right? We have a new mindset on how we want to be able to interact and use a product. I think the best example I can think of is one time my four-year-old, we were watching TV, and he wanted to change the channel. And so he literally walks up to the TV and swipes the TV trying to change the channel. And I'm like, eh, that's not that's not the right way, right? But I'm thinking like, yeah, that kid has something, right? That's the way we expect to interact with our products. But what do I do? I pick up this remote control and I'm pushing the button. This button is worn out, right? It has been pressed so many times. And so I push a little harder, right? Because that makes the electrons work better if you push harder on the remote. Obviously, it didn't work. And really what ended up happening is I had to throw this remote away. $10 remote, not a big deal. But if you start talking about an appliance or something in our home that's, a, you know, hundreds of dollars, right? I don't want to throw that away because it's got a little crack in the button on it. So what's wrong with our current buttons? Yeah, so if you look at them, oftentimes we see it cracked, right? We've seen that button at the gas station where you can tell exactly how many times that button has been pressed. Think of your old stereo that you had in college, right? That button is completely gone. They're not always easy to clean because it's a mechanical button, right? It's not water resistant. Stuff, grime and things can get down behind them. They're just not durable. And it's not creating the kind of modern user experience that we expect. This ability to have sliders and dials and controls that we use with our modern appliances to really create... A very aesthetically pleasing appliance and product. It's just not there. Okay, shoot. What's the better solution? Yeah, so let's look at these touch control, very modern touch sensing environment where I can go up and I have these capacitive touch buttons where I can touch, I can slide and create a very compelling and modern type appliance, whether it goes into a fridge, a washing machine, a water heater, rice cookers, appliances, microwave ovens, uh, things like that. Now that's great for home appliances, but what else have you got? Yeah, so it's not just limited to home appliances. You can also look at things that go into locks on our front doors or in the office, different types of desk lamps or appliances we have, or even our automobiles in terms of how to access the controls and the doors. Okay, so Clark, tell me about the landscape for touch right now. What is the market really looking like here? Certainly, yeah. So we have a chart here that we show the touch adoption rates in home appliances specifically. It really shows the future is now. We see a good growth for appliances showing up through 20. But what's remarkable here is it's showing the number of these appliances that are actually adopting touch rates and how much quicker that growth is as the adoption rate over the appliances. By 2020, we have upwards of 40% of appliances would have these touch features, not just the really fancy high-end appliances that are going to have these features. All of the products will. Okay, so how does your touch science fiction stuff work? So really, this is kind of the basic concept. Remember that lamp we had as a kid that you could go up and you could touch and the lamp would turn on, right? It was like like magic to us. But really what that is, is it's just measuring the capacitance that you're creating on that electrode, on that item by touching it. And it's the basic same principles as that, just a lot more precise and a lot more intelligent. 
So it's measuring the change in capacitance, and that's measured and monitored over time to detect these touch events and also rejecting these non-touch events to make sure that it's accurate. It can be implemented using a self-capacitance mode or a mutual capacitance mode, which we can detail a little bit more later on. Electrodes can be multiplexed to create lots of different discrete buttons of multiple electrodes. They can be covered with an overlay to create a nice compelling product or used with gloves. There's many environments where the user has to use gloves in order to work with the product. And you have to consider all of these while working in a number of environmental conditions, whether it's in a noisy appliance or some type of a moisture prone location. Okay, so what if I want something easy to implement? Yeah, so let's talk a little bit about the self-capacitance touch sensing mode, right? This is going to create a very basic implementation. It's usually done with a single electrode. It's measuring a delta in capacitance when it's touched, and it can trigger the response. And so it's there for kind of a simple and mature pattern designs for the actual electrode itself. It's going to allow the least amount of crosstalk among these different sensing channels, and it's going to provide a single point sensing for things like buttons and sliders and wheels and things like that. All right, and let's get more robust, something more complex here. Yeah, so now we're hitting into things more like the mutual capacitance, where I'm actually taking two different electrodes and using them in combination to create kind of this transmitter and receiver pair. It's monitoring and creating these levels where it's monitoring the combination of these two signals to provide a better sensitivity, a much better uh, use in moisture, so moisture immunity. Great for handling the different muxing that we talked about, the muxing of the pins. So great for those implementations. It makes it easier to route pins because they're not quite as sensitive and a a great thing for being able to do multi-point sensing. Now, Clark, are there specific challenges we need to be thinking about here? Yeah, absolutely. So things like if you're in a noisy environment, we look at appliances, right? We have lots of motors, lots of things going on, vibrations happening inside of an appliance. So it's very fundamental that it be able to reject that type of environment and handle different types of noise immunities that are happening in these products. There's lots of times where you'll need to have this in a moisture-prone location, whether it's steam from a microwave oven, or a rice cooker or something like that, or some type of industrial area where there's going to be sea salt or the things that are actually getting on the panels. It still has to be able to work through those situations. We'd mentioned before being able to wear gloves, right? If this is it being deployed in type of medical type environment where gloves are a requirement or just maybe it's cold outside, it has to be able to work with that. And then nobody wants to see kind of this bare PCB, this bare board on their product. It needs to be pretty, it needs to be stylish. So we're talking about these different types of overlays, whether they're acrylic or glass, those need to be able to work through those different types of mediums as well. So I am here at NXP to talk about touch. So what does NXP have in this realm? Absolutely. So we're talking about the NXP touch, right? We're talking about a complete hardware and software solution. This is a robust capacitive sensing hardware IP, the NXP touch. Today it's available on our five volt parts, our robust Kinetis KE15Z microcontroller. And the software itself is based on the MCU Expresso SDK. So you get a full, a very rich software touch library and code base that all creates a robust, easy-to-use solution. It's got a legacy of development going all the way back to the 8-bit, these SO8 parts with the TSI moving up to the ARM cores with the Kinetis L and now kind of culminating today in NXP Touch. Okay, I like that this is a hardware and software solution, but first, let's look at that hardware. Yeah, so we have the Kinetis KE15Z, which is a 72 megahertz device. It's going to also be available later this year on a smaller form factor derivative of that device that's a 48 megahertz for a lower cost, lower power solution. But some of the top value features you're going to get out of this hardware solution are going to be those two operating modes that we talked about, the self-capacitance and the mutual capacitance mode, where you're going to get up to 25 or 36 keys respectively. There's no need for external components because everything is built into this microprocessor. All you need is an electrode that comes out of it. And with that, you're going to achieve a high sensitivity and resolution. In contrast to some of the previous generations of the touch software, you're going to get an increased robustness available. So improved EMC performance, passing the ability to pass the IEC 61000 4.6 tests, and accurate touch detection even in the presence of moisture conditions. And all of that with the ease of use that you get with the NXP touch support library, as well as the SDKs that are available. Okay, Clark, can we look under the hood? Yeah, absolutely. So let's look a little bit more at the Kinetis KE15Z. I think the main thing that I want to convey 
right here, right? This is a full featured microcontroller. It's got all the capabilities you'd expect of a device like this. This one's running up to 72 megahertz based on the ARM Cortex M0+. Plus. You're going to get tons of memory that's needed for these types of applications. You're going to get the communication interfaces you expect, like a UART and SPI and I2C, lots of analog capabilities, tons of timers to be able to do all kinds of great stuff. But then you really kind of focus down on the robust touch, right? And that's what we're talking about today, that ability to handle the touch electrodes. So tell me more about that red box there. Yeah, absolutely. So the TSI, that's the IP that's on this particular hardware on the KE15 that allows us to implement this. We're going to be able to have more keys, right? We've got a robust TSI, supports the mutual and the self-cap. We've got advanced EMC robustness. It's past the IEC 61000, both in the 3 volt and in the 10 volt, which means it's very suitable for those very noisy applications where in appliances and things like that. The waterproof, that ability to be able to have it in a water condition where it can have water on the electrodes and it not detect false touches and actually still work when I go to touch it. Now that we've talked about the hardware, let's look at that software side of things. Yeah, so this is where the magic to me happens, right? So if we look at this block diagram, we start with the hardware. We've talked about that, right? We've got the KE15 in this particular example we're talking about, and it has the TSI block. But based on top of that, we start talking about the software. So the first thing is the MCU Expresso SDK. These are the base drivers and software that's going to be interacting with the hardware. And so there's an actual TSI driver. And you can interact with that. That's great if you want to implement a very simple button. But we want to be able to do things that are just very compelling and very awesome. So this is where we start bringing in the NXP Touch library. And we start building and abstracting out these different modules to create something that's very compelling. And if we look at things, we're going to have the different types of decoders controls. That's at the very top level. And that's going to allow you to create things like a slider, an analog slider, a rotary dial, or a keypad. Right? And those are the highest levels. And underneath those, it's actually encapsulating all of the different pieces that I need, whether it's an electrode and the types of filtering that it's using. So there's support for the advanced filtering and integration detection, which is AFID, or the signal adaptive filtering algorithm, or SAFA. And those are the ways that it actually detects the touch and the different callbacks to be able to say it. I noticed that there was a touch, there was a release, there was an actual motion moving across these sliders. And so that's how it allows us to detect those different things to create those elements. Do you guys have any other tools to help me implement this faster? Obviously, we want you to be as efficient as possible in creating these. So there is a graphical interface tool that allows you to actually see all the critical variables in the system. You actually see the touch events occur when you touch the electrode in real time, see those values drop, and to be able to tune it, right? There's different parameters that you can set and go in and adjust to create the sensitivity and the capabilities that you need that are specific to your implementation. So absolutely, there's a nice graphical tool based on FreeMaster that's available to do that. Now that we've talked about this solution, can you go over the overall benefits for me? Yeah, absolutely. So really what we want you to be is we want you to be efficient at creating an application like this, right? So we want to be able to reduce your time to market. And we do that through these application level APIs. We want it to make sure that it's easy for you to debug and test this application. So you get the access to that GUI application that provides visibility into the inner workings of the product itself. It's got to be easy to configure. So there's actually all the configurations in one file. It's all you got to go in and modify is touching that one file to get everything set up. You need to be able to integrate this for new platforms or existing demos, right? We're using one of these development boards. So there's lots of examples using both the mutual capacitance and self-capacitance. And you've got to be able to maintain this to keep it up to date to make sure that you have a robust software framework to start with. And that's really where the MCU Expresso SDK comes into play. All right, I'm ready to get my hands dirty. What have you got to get me started? Yeah, absolutely. So there are a variety of different development boards that allow you to run some of these examples and to test out the capabilities. The main one that we'll talk about is based on the Freedom platform. And that's the Freedom KE15Z. It's an ultra low cost, low development platform. It's in the Freedom form factor that has the Arduino compatible headers on it. And it's got some basic touchpad support built directly into this development board. But if you want to extend that board, there's the Freedom Shield called the Freedom Touch. And what this does is it allows you to connect this shield to the top of the Freedom KE15Z. And now you've got access to multiplex buttons. You've got access to analog sliders and dial wheels. So you can actually start seeing some of the advanced 
capabilities that are available in this software solution. And then there's also a more advanced TSI evaluation board that we use for a lot of the testing that we do on this product that has all kinds of different capabilities in terms of being able to test out the overlay capabilities, the water rejection, and the other features that we've talked about in this presentation. Okay, cool. And Clark, where should I go for more information? Yeah, absolutely. So the best place to go to get more information as nxp.com slash touch. And here you'll learn more about the NXP Touch solution that provides a complete solution for touch control applications. It's easy to use, easy to maintain compared to the mechanical buttons that we've talked about, and really creates that robust solution that enables engineers to compare the code, to do the dynamic tuning through this GUI tool that we talked about, and generate the automatic parameters. And really, our goal is to help you reduce your time to market. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Clark. Absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity. Before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find more information about the NXP Touch Solution. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal or check out YouTube, keyword EE Journal.